we'll go ahead and move on to our presentation from uh, Maria Zach. And this is uh, talking about the elections. Go ahead. Good morning. I'm Maria Zach from Nations in Action, and we are an organization that's devoted to transparent government, transformative politicians, trustworthy parties, and truthful media. The Italian Secret Service actually received information from Arturo's girlfriend, he considers wife because they've been together so long. Her uncle is part of the Italian intelligence services. She said, uncle, Arturo came home and said, he doesn't understand why we're stealing America's election. They immediately go to Leonardo and investigate. Arturo confesses. The Italian intelligence services reach out to us November 18th. They said something happened, we're watching a coup d'etat in the United States of America. They were fearful of meeting with anyone. There were two affidavits that were delivered into Congress, and they were delivered from Italian citizens that contacted us. Intelligence agencies had been trying to reach out because their country had already fallen. And that is what is happening around the world. The intelligence agencies are watching corruption and China come in to their, their countries and buying off politicians and hiding things and using fraud to do amazing efforts to take over and own property and, in some instances, countries. So today I'm going to play for you an audio tape that should shock you all. It'll shock America. This is the first place I have chosen to testify in. I could have walked into any state. I know my way around. We've already proven my credentials. I know government affairs. I can walk in, and when I play this for you, and why Kansas? Because Kansas was a pro-Trump victor of electors. But I would argue, you don't know. You do not know the real result of your election. You also probably have not been made aware of what was occurring in Italy. Leonardo, the defense contracting firm, had some strange occurrences happening with people coming in and out that the intelligence services witnessed of people coming from Frankfurt into the Italian U.S. Embassy in Rome on Via Veneto. This instance enabled individuals to come forward and supposedly according to the Italian intelligence services, work with Leonardo to change the results of the United States election. But more frightening is that they claim there were 47 to 52 presidential elections around the world, and they now have telemetry experts, over 200, that speak foreign languages that are all different. So what you are dealing with is a very calculated attempt to take down presidencies and control countries. So this audio that I'm about to play for you is from an individual who was a member of the CIA and the State Department. His name is Larry Johnson. Many of you may not know, but I am the person not only who hand-delivered that letter to Donald Trump on Christmas Eve on, in 2020, telling him who stole the election, where they stole it, and how they stole it. And my number one goal was to bring back one of the people who was in the satellite center. His name was Arturo Delia. My goal was to rescue him and bring him over to America because he was willing to testify. There were people that would not assist, that I thought would assist, but what was most shocking was this voice recording that I will play now. Yeah, hi, Larry Johnson. We spoke yesterday. Uh, listen, I n needed to see if you would help us get in touch with the lawyer, because after you talked to him yesterday, he went uh, missing. Um, we have people in Italy now and are ready to have the person uh, that's in jail. We've got a national security team that can extradite him and bring him back safely to the United States. So that's already lined up. There's no need for an airplane because the airplane is going to be provided and 
witness protection provided. If you could call me, it's your convenience, 301-442-5957. That's our United States government, supposedly, national security, that are going to go rescue our Torridelia. Anyone know about that? Probably not. Anyone? Because most Americans had this truth hidden from them, that there was an operation, supposedly, but the number one thing that they were looking for in the beginning of that message was where the lawyers were and the people who did the affidavits who were being hunted to be killed. These are brave people around the world that are trying to tell the truth and having great difficulty with the United States government apparatus. Telling the truth is not easy, and people are risking their lives. So that was the transcript. So you ask, OK, what proof is there? Well, I would definitely consider that, sir, Mr. Chairman and members. That is called proof. That needs an investigation. Where is our law enforcement? It should be at the local, state, and federal levels immediately to investigate Larry Johnson and the activities that he did in the United States during this whole event. You know, everyone says, if you see something, say something, right? We're all supposed to see something, say something, and then what happens? You get blasted. We had patterns of illegal activity across the country. We had people not matching signatures on the ballots. We had witnesses galore filling out affidavits. I am so proud of the team at Nations in Action because they filed many, many, many affidavits. They saw the computers actually online and there are photographs. So if anyone says the machines weren't online, that is false. So these witnesses that have come forward have also identified over 35,000 illegal cross-county voting just in Georgia alone, and that relates to President Trump's talk with Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, where he was saying, I know that there are votes there that were illegally cast. He was right. He is actually vindicated in the proof today because the cross-reference with the state uh, documents and the U.S. Postal Service uh, feed shows that these people did not live where they actually voted. Those votes should have never been counted. Now we have illegal votes that are cast using fake residences and business addresses, photocopied identical ballots and stacks fed into tabulators, and many fake, unfolded, unmailed absentee ballots. Of the thousands of affidavits just filed in Georgia alone, would you like to know how many arrests were made? Zero. Zero. All those great citizens who we ask to do us a favor and help us do our right to vote, to go and volunteer to work polls, had no, no assistance at all in having a free and fair election, and they witnessed the failures of America. So now you should be asking me, who are the people in Italy, Maria? Who are they that actually coordinated and conspired because this is where we really break things down and show you the proof of what occurred. Stefano Serafini on your left is actually a member of our State Department who retired just days before the election. It is said that he, in an intercept, it was picked up that he was retiring so he wouldn't lose his pension should he be caught. He was coordinating with General Claudio Graziano General Graziano is also the, at the time, was the EU commander. And they were meeting across the street at the St. Regis Hotel. And it was with Ignacia Mancata, who is the CEO of FATA, which is FATA SPA, which is a subsidiary of Leonardo, one of the largest defense contracting firms in the world. They are the largest in Italy. And they received numerous United States military and intelligence contracts. That should frighten everybody right now. Now, they were meeting in his hotel, and in March of 2020, they were coordinating this plan. The Italian intelligence services actually provided me with the cell phone number for the go order, and it goes to General Graziano. So then you ask, well, they concoct the plan, they have to go get the IT guys. Who's gonna do it? Well, they already had a guy. His name is Charles Robinson. He is a telemetry expert. He came in a week prior to the election of November 2020. He uploaded MilSpec software. 
and he had traveled from Frankfurt. He was working in there with Arturo D'Alia. He is an IT guru in Italy. He's known as the smartest. The Italian Secret Service actually received information from Arturo's girlfriend, he considers wife because they've been together so long. Her uncle is part of the Italian intelligence services. She said, uncle? Arturo came home and said, he doesn't understand why we're stealing America's election. They immediately go to Leonardo and investigate. Arturo confesses. What they don't know, what Arturo doesn't know and anyone else, the Italian intelligence services, with the help of the Finanza Guardia, were conducting the investigation, and they said they were there to check for financial fraud. So they were checking all the other employees, saying, hey, you got anything? What's going on around here? Any financial fraud? And one guy was a little nervous, and he said, I don't have financial fraud, but something strange happened in the satellite center I'd like to confess. There was actually a second person in his name we had named Beta. Beta confessed to the Italian Secret Service, corroborating the entire story that Arturo Delia told to the intelligence services of Italy. <laughs> this is Arturo. Arturo was hiding in the facility for 18 days while I tried to rescue him. I am just a citizen. I am not agency. I shouldn't have to go do this for my country, but I will bleed for my country. And I had an opportunity to bring the witness and try to rescue him before he would be murdered leaving Italy. For 18 days, we hid him. And I personally funded and took money out of my retirement to do this. I can tell you that I was at the last straw and made a recommendation in the beginning of December to drop an article in Italy because I didn't know what else to do. I couldn't get to anyone. And I have 30 years of experience and I had to wonder, why is it that a lot of the elected officials I went to are so afraid of me coming out with this information? It didn't matter if they were Democrats or Republicans, because I know everyone. I know Stacey Abrams. I know Brian Kemp. I know them all, and they have known me for years, and they have known me to be a very honest person. I will bleed for my country, and I will not cover for my party or any individual that I consider a friend, because we are at war, and that is what America deserves. So I drop the recommendation and strategy to drop the article in Italy. The day the article dropped, all hell broke loose in Italy. They immediately put out for the arrest of Arturo Delia, and they arrested and jailed him. They fired their head of cyber security for the country, and they fired the head of telecom for the country. Oh, just on one day when I drop one little article. Isn't that amazing? I'm sure that's just totally pure coincidence. So the timeline. We did an extensive timeline of what was occurring as this was happening. We knew that the meetings were taking place from March of 2020 and then into the summer. November, the first week of November, the crew arrived to the U.S. Embassy. There were data thrusts during the election because they said they couldn't keep up with all the votes and switching them. It was uh, uh, through the use of the Galileo satellite was, that was taken offline to load the MilSpec software. And let me make it very clear. I also own an IT company. I have friends who are both SEAL Team 6 former members that are communications and IT specialists. You have a document in your folder that explains how the satellites can be used. There are many methods. Anyone get DISH Network? Anyone get satellite TV? It's the same thing. So I'm going to make it real easy for you because I tell you, IT can be a bit complex. And so they loaded the software. They used it. Artur goes home and tells us, his uh, significant other, the Italian intelligence services reach out to us November 18th. They said something happened, we're watching a coup d'etat in the United States of America. They were fearful of meeting with anyone. The Italian government heads changed and did the arrests of the Sparkle Telecom and CERT, and then the CIA operatives fled immediately from the embassy. 
the same day as the article dropping. That is not coincidence. This is one of the gentlemen, if you notice the sneaker, same guy. That picture is from the United States Rome Embassy. Nobody can get that picture unless you're Italian intelligence services. The camera is super high up. It is a secured facility, secured item. They sent me that photo. They were sending me documents and sending me photos because they knew there was nobody in the United States Rome Embassy that they could trust. And that is a sad, sad, sad day for America to wake up to this reality. It is not partisan, I will remind everyone. This is a whole different operation and a whole different war we are fighting. These are the other operatives that were fleeing on that day. They told the ticket agent that they were returning back to Frankfurt, which confirmed everything. Leonardo actually had their facility, their um, uh, secure facility for all of their cloud services in Frankfurt, and they recently moved it. But at the time, it was in Frankfurt. They were also looking at renaming Leonardo and breaking it into pieces as we speak. Sound familiar? Maybe something that used to be called Facebook? So then we have the gentleman in the center. There's a gentleman with a very large bicep. And you would say, huh, why do we care about that gentleman's bicep? We care a lot about that gentleman because that gentleman is out of Canada. He is not an American, he is Canadian. These gentlemen, this one in particular, we received an, a tip immediately that this gentleman, Charles Robinson, had confessed to stealing races in Arizona as early as early 2000, including Janet Napolitano's race for governor. He returned back to Canada with a brand new sports car and confessed to a fellow co-worker while he was working at one point for Dominion then he was not working for Dominion, then he went back to Dominion, and then he left and was working for another company. This gentleman has an extraordinary large bicep. He's very well known by this uh, source. This source worked with Canadian law enforcement who seemed to be a lot more willing than our federal agencies, and they started tracking the gentleman. The sources claim that this is the guy who is so brilliant as a telemetry expert that he was able to load the software and change the votes. He now has three women and there are people hunting him because people have followed my work and sadly some of them have done things that are, in my opinion, treasonous. They have gone to Italy under the guise of collecting money to go do an investigation on Italy and they've taken this information and gone and gotten massages, rented villas, and they've also gotten people inspired to go hunt this guy down, as well as Stefano Serafini from the U.S. Embassy. Serafini is still in Italy. He does not return to his McLean, Virginia home because he knows there are Americans looking for him. In my opinion, that was very wrong to incite Americans to go after and hunt these people. But Americans are desperate for politicians and law enforcement to do something. So I beg of you to work with law enforcement and make something happen after this presentation because there's too much proof to not have it happen. Now for Alexander Nix. That name should be familiar to all of you. He was very involved in races in 2016 and prior. He was involved in the Cruz campaign. He was involved in the Trump campaign and he was fined and part of the use of people's data from Facebook, a huge massive fine that Mark Zuckerberg had to pay. And I always found it odd, why would Mark Zuckerberg be working with the IT guy from Cambridge Analytica out of London, and yet they're working to help Republicans? That doesn't seem to make sense because Mr. Zuckerberg seems to be on the other side. Well, the Italian intelligence services immediately started giving me downloads on all the people, including sending me their picture and phone numbers out of their phones, showing and verifying that they not only knew who they were, they had relationships. 
one person actually drove Alexander Nix to the CEO's office at Leonardo in Italy. Now, you must ask yourself, why would an IT guy who has a voter technology actually be going to a defense contracting firm in Italy? Doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. And so you have to ask, okay, so Alexander Nix, is he MI6 like the Italian intelligence services says? Was he in meetings in America with CISA, the, the security association that was ensuring our elections? I am told that he was actually given permission and attendance of our election integrity and security meetings in the United States federal government as late as October of 2020. And he is a British citizen. He is not American, and he ran an IT company as his cover called Cambridge Analytica, where there are movies by Brittany Kaiser and others, Chris Wiley, who are two very liberal Democrats who came out, they saw something, and they said something. And these people know something is wrong, and they have written books, and I highly recommend reading those. So... While this was going on, the Italian intelligence services started telling me how things were breaking down in Italy and the Italian, Italian, uh, Italian government was going to collapse. I am not one who's ever received an intelligence briefing in my life. I was a lobbyist, state lobbyist. You know many of people just like me. And so all of a sudden I'm being told that Joe Biden called Matteo Renzi, who was the former prime minister, prior to the collapse of the government, and he said, I need you to take down Giuseppe Conte as the prime minister. Within three weeks, Giuseppe Conte was down and Italy was in total chaos. That is proof that the intel intercepts that I was receiving were factual. Now, Conte was not real happy about going down, but he was given millions of dollars, we were told, in a California bank. These are banking issues as well. There were movements and pallets of cash, including the information that I supplied to special counsel John Durham. You are the first government agency that I am making this very clear to everyone. John Durham is in possession of documents from me that include the moving of pallets of cash by Barack Obama through the Dubai embassy our United States government CIA agent was present. $400 million were moved from there with the help of Italians and the Finanza Guardia in Italy knows. And they supplied the names of the people in the room. And now we need you to get your United States senators and your congressional delegation. And I don't care what party they are. And they need to work together because stealing from the American families in Kansas is wrong and they stole $400 million and put it in the Merrill Lynch in Geneva, Switzerland. That is evidence that is sitting before us today. This story gets worse and more horrifying for the citizens of Kansas and America. So we knew that the plot was going to continue. They were gonna to try to kill Arturo Delia we knew that they were chasing the Italians that were helping us. They have been threatened. They have been in car chases. They have had their cars roll over and people injured. And there have been many Italians who have been murdered. Five government officials in March alone were murdered, including an ambassador. A brand new appointment to the cabinet was murdered the very day he was appointed. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield the floor for questions. Okay. Do we have questions? You gave us a lot. It's awful hard to, to grasp everything that all you're saying, and a lot of it's very new for us. Yes, you, sir. Um, going to Italy and the Leonardo, if I understand what you're saying, is that that satellite there could send the codes and they can uh, affect and change elections, not only in the United States, but around the world. Is that, did I understand that correctly? Yes, sir. 